Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of Language Lore, a new series that will cover everything and anything related to languages and linguistics. Really, anything. So if you have any suggestions for future episodes, any whatsoever, write them in the comments below. In the Isles of Britain, specifically on the west coast of Great Britain, there lies a quite remarkable Celtic language. Welsh, or Cymraic, as it's known endonymically, oh yeah, we're using all the fancy linguistics words today, has a lot of cool grammatical and phonological features that will undoubtedly be covered in future episodes. Today, however, we'll witness a change that spread throughout the Proto-Celtic language over the course of pre-Cymric times. Since records are scarce from that period, its existence can be easily postulated instead through examining its present-day effects, which include idiosyncrasies in modern-day Welsh grammar. Specifically, we'll take a look at the mutating force of a, ah, a low vowel bent on bringing e and u down to its murky depths. <laughs> Such history and more will be covered on this episode of... Language lore. In dusty tomes and tattered scrolls is language lore. There's so much to explore in the realm of language lore. You'll find out more about language lore. Alright, so what is a affection? Well, it's certainly not specific in nature to Welsh or even the Celtic languages in general. However, the name affection for referring to vowel mutation is pretty specifically constrained to Celtic linguistics, as far as I'm aware. The A mutating phenomenon in general can also be found in the Germanic languages, the particulars of which I'm sure I'll cover in a future episode. Today, we're focusing on the Welsh realization. Let's get into it. Over the course of Welsh and the other Brythonic languages, vowels really tended to affect, or mutate, the preceding neighbors. In particular, vowels at the end of a word, also known as ultimate vowels, sounds pretty cool, huh? Had the strongest effect. The important thing to note here is that a affection is only found as an ultimate mutation, not as a penultimate one. Penultimate means before the ultimate, so in this case it means the syllable before the last one. To contrast, I affection, a change caused by the presence of the vowel e and its semi-vowel equivalent y was found with both ultimate and penultimate variants, with the penultimate mutation being a bit weaker in its impacts. To witness the effects of a affection on both short e and u in all its glory, let's take a look at the evolution of a noun adjective pair from Proto-Celtic to Modern Welsh. Proto-Celtic, the ancestor to all of the Celtic languages, including Irish, Scottish Gaelic, Manx, Welsh, Breton, and Cornish, is theorized to have had three noun genders with pretty distinct nominative singular endings. The endings used when the noun is the subject of a sentence, which could be seen as its default form. Nouns in the masculine gender generally ended in s, s. Nouns in the neuter gender generally ended in m, m. And nouns in the feminine gender generally ended in a long a. Ah, an astute student of linguistics might pick up on some foreshadowing here. For any of those familiar with Latin or Greek, these suffixes should look decently familiar. That's the Indo-European family for you. These endings were reflected on adjectives which modified those nouns as well, just like in most modern Romance languages today, such as Spanish or French. La silla roja, the red chair, but el escritorio rojo, the red desk. We'll just compare the Welsh masculine and feminine genders here, since the neuter generally collapsed with the masculine class over the course of Welsh history. So, with a masculine noun adjective pair in Proto-Celtic, we have Gorwos Windos, a white deer, or really a deer white because of the noun adjective order in the Celtic languages, and for the feminine noun adjective pair we have Cata Winda, a white cat, or a cat white. Now, nothing super interesting happens with the former pair. It just turns from Gorwos Windos, to Carvos Winnos, Carvos Guinnos, Caruguin, 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 and after converting to modern Welsh spelling conventions, we get the present day Caruguin, still a white deer. However, you get Cata Winda, a white cat, Cata Winna, Cata Guinna, Cafa Guinna, Cafa Winna, Cafa Wenna, Cath Wen, Cath Wen, and when transliterated to modern Welsh spelling conventions, we get cough when. So, without minding the initial initian, we immediately see a difference in masculine and feminine adjectives based on a vocalic difference. Caru gwyn, masculine, cough when. Feminine. 
As you already saw, that distinction was due to the pulling down effect of the final ah, the marker of feminine nouns. The same thing happened with short u. As in the masculine and feminine noun adjective pair, karu trum, a heavy deer, but kath drom, a heavy cat. In addition, it should be noted that a affection only had an impact on short e and u. So forms like shiros and shira, meaning long, weren't impacted by the change. This is probably because the vowels are a bit stronger and less likely to be influenced by a. Ah. Their modern forms are both here for the masculine and feminine variants. Likewise, puros and pura, meaning fresh, weren't affected either. Their modern forms in Welsh are both ir. Remember, when you hear the vowels in here and ear, don't expect that they peer into the unclear depths of a, ah, and subsequently disappear and reappear here nearer to it as the dear mid vowels a and o. Is that poetry? Do I get an award? The effect of a affection on short e and u wasn't only contained in adjectives. Nouns such as gwave, meaning appearance, started out as wida, something seen. As you might imagine, feminine Latin loan words, which predominantly ended in a, are some other great examples for the change. Exempli gratia, the Latin grammatica, grammar, became the modern Welsh grammatic, grammar. Some verb forms were affected as well. For instance, the verbal noun buta, meaning being or becoming, shifted to the modern Welsh bod, with an o. This doesn't wreak too much havoc on the verbal paradigm. However, it does mean that most of its inflections, which didn't have an ancestral a, ah, reflect the old u vowel instead of a lowered o. Badav, badi, bid, etc., instead of bolav, bodi, bod, etc. Well, those are the basics of Welsh a affection on the linguistic side of things. But if you have any more questions or comments, be sure to write them down below. Thanks for watching. Until next time.